A day is just a few days away on the Plains, and I can't think of a spring practice that is more important anywhere in college football than it is for Brian Harson and Auburn. We go to Kyle Loomis on E2C Network. Check him and the rest of the staff out right here on a YouTube talking Auburn football, athletics, and academics and uh, yeah. school life there on the Plains. Kyle, how are you doing today? Doing very well. Excited for spring, what it brings, obviously, for football. But as you said, we cover a lot of different aspects of the university, the family, as we call it, the Auburn family. Uh, so there's a lot that happens during spring. It's honestly too much to keep up with, uh, whether it's baseball, softball, spring football practice, what's going on in the offseason of basketball. I'm tired, man. <laughs> I'm tired <laughs> right now. I try to keep straight with everything. <laughs> Well, we hope uh, we can get you focused on just football yes. for the next few minutes. Yes. And uh, this quarterback race, so Demetrius Davis moves on into the transfer portal. So he saw the writing on the wall. Yes, I, I would goes. definitely say so. Yeah. So then we've got TJ Finley, uh, who's the the incumbent of sorts mm -hmm. uh, by default, and also the healthiest of the competitors right now. And Zach Calzada is trying to work his way back. So is the spring game really at a good time to give us much indication on where we stand? You know, that's a great question. Um, I think everybody who wants to rush to a decision about quarterbacks by the end of the spring game will be doing themselves a disservice uh, because Zach Calzada hasn't even really fully participated in reps. Now, he's been out there increasingly as the spring has gone on. And he's very much a factor in this quarterback race. But however, as, as I've felt from the get-go, even before the spring officially started, this was TJ Finley's job to lose as of this point, just being the incumbent of sorts, even though it was only three games with it left in the season, really, where he took over officially with Bo Nix getting injured and now transferring out. Um, it, it's, it's his job to lose. And from all accounts, he's impressing in spring practice right now. And with Demetrius Davis leaving, that was the guy that everybody thought would push him a little bit outside of Zach Calzada for that starting job, him eliminating himself from that equation. Even though it seems kind of like the logical situation just to go to TJ at this point, I'm not ready to write it off, but I would increasingly put more and more faith in TJ getting the nod to start on Mercer as of this moment. TJ Finley, a 54% uh, passer last year, six touchdowns and a pick. And, of course, leading the troops uh, down after uh, Bo Nix was injured the stretch drive of the season. Hmm. Got uh, Kyle Loomis on the line from E2C Network uh, right here on YouTube tracking Auburn. If you love Auburn, you should already know about it. If you don't, uh, get on over there. And when I say Auburn, I'm not just saying Auburn football, Auburn athletics, and, again, academic and uh, student life there at Auburn. So, by extension... Uh, the, the quarterback battle will, of course, ensue into August, we think. Mm -hmm. And the wide receiver position is in flux as well, just with a lot of guys competing for those two, three, and four spots. Yes. Yeah, it definitely is something that's still very much up in the air. Shedrick Jackson being the main holdover uh, from last year. This will mean something to Auburn fans, maybe not to anybody that's not an Auburn fan, but a lot of people are starting to associate him with the Cody Burns role uh, or that type of figure in Auburn football. A reliable, solid guy at that position he can count on in a pinch, but he was never the guy at wide receiver. Now, I may be saying a disservice here to Shedrick Jackson, and he may just wow us all by the time we get to fall, and I'm hoping for that. I love Shedrick Jackson, one of my favorite players on the team, being a legacy guy and Bo Jackson's nephew. So I really hope that's the case. But we're really waiting for that person to set up. And there's some guys that aren't currently on campus as of yet that could potentially seize that moment. Javarius Johnson continues to be the guy that a lot of fans look to and hoping that he can be that wow factor at wide receiver opposite of Shedrick Jackson. There's also going to be some guys like a Jay Fair who's already on campus and Camden Brown who's still coming in that might factor into that mix. But I'll tell you one name that continues to come up this season and obviously this spring practice, but we were hearing even as early as last year. That's Tavares Dawson. Towards the end of uh, the fall prep before the season actually started, we were hearing word that he had really impressed the coaches and that led a lot of us to believe that he would see some time at wide receiver. 
that never came to fruition. Don't know why. Don't really have any ev evidence to say that there was something wrong or maybe it just wasn't the time he wasn't right. But he's continuing to get those type of stories printed out about him, those things being seen, expressed by the coaches. So I'm starting to believe that we might start seeing some Savar Tavares Dawson out there a little bit more. And he might be one of those dark horse candidates for a guy to really pay attention to at the wide receiver position, along with some of these newer faces. But continuing to rely on Shedrick Jackson, obviously, and Javarius Johnson. But that is definitely one other name to keep in mind. So, Kyle, in addition to what we've covered, looking at both sides of the ball, what are you expecting to see, want to see, where the critical units that mm -hmm. uh, are in flux that uh, – you think you'll be able to get a little bit better read on following Saturday? Yeah, that's a great question. I think there's a lot of uh, positions where there's some battles, there's some opportunities. Uh, before we move over to defense, you know, offensive line is one of those. We've talked a lot, probably at nauseum on my channel and here, I'm sure with you as well, about how much the offensive line as a unit has been lamented the last couple of seasons. And uh, we had hoped that they were going to all be able to be healthy this spring to really fine tune that cohesion with a lot of them that stayed over this year. But a lot of those guys are injured. They're not being able to participate in spring practice right now, or at least not to the full capacity. But on the flip side of that, that gives an opportunity for some of these new guys that we've been wanting to get a chance because it hasn't been working out so well the last couple of seasons. They're getting those reps now. So you can be worried about the guys that are, probably going to start that are injured right now austin troxel nick brahms names like that brandon council but there's some of these other guys are really starting to get opportunities that i'm really encouraged for not just this season but for seasons to come after that because a lot of those guys would be gone after this season i'd say one other group that i'm really interested in watching is the defensive backfield if you want me to hone in on the spot the cornerbacks uh, i think with the loss of roger mccreary there's a hole there for somebody to be the guy, as we've talked about, kind of similar to wide receivers. Jalen Simpson seems to be the guy that will take that role. Opposite him on the other side of the field, Nehemiah Pritchett. But we've also had one guy transfer out in Roe Torrance. Um, he was likely going to be in that mix, and obviously kind of similar to Demetrius Davis, uh, decided and saw the writing on the wall, I'm sure, because of the talent that's behind him uh, that's going to be getting opportunities. J.D. Rhymes in that mix. Uh, a lot of other guys as well that haven't even got onto campus. So I'm really excited just to watch the defensive backfield, more specifically the cornerbacks, to see not just what the starters look like, the supposed starters, but the backups behind them. We've got Kyle Loomis on board to talk up the Auburn Tigers looking ahead to the spring game, A-Day uh, on the Plains, Saturday, April 9th. You can catch Kyle's work at E2C Network. You see there on the banner. So I don't know that because of the vanilla nature of spring games mm -hmm. that we're really going to get a read on offense and defensive strategy and what the coordinators have brought to the table and how they may change things or tweak things. And, 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 and um, from, from the, the previous regime on both sides of the football, not yeah. under Brian Harson, of course, uh, he's still in play, but uh, defensive coordinator, offensive coordinator changes, but based on what you've gathered, Again, not necessarily looking for there to be anything evident on Saturday, but uh, based on what uh, the reports are coming out of spring practice and what you've gathered, uh, any nuances to either side of the ball that seem to be different? I will definitely give you a word that a lot of Auburn fans are going to be very happy with, and it's being used by Coach Cadillac Williams, the running backs coach, and several others as well. Downhill, and that's in reference to the running game. And that's what was missing from this offense last year really was a utilization of not only tank bigsby but other running backs like jarquez hunter who is currently injured he got an injury during spring practice had to have a procedure be probably will be back for the fall and full health there but downhill that's really what's starting to come out of that for the offense the focus is shifting supposedly as you have already addressed it's hard to really get a read on if this is actually going to follow through into the fall but downhill run game really focusing and leaning on what we know we have, and that is an incredible running back in Tank Bigsby. And also, Jarquez Hunter, when he's healthy, provides a different pace of play there that he can do and the different skill set that he has. But there's even talent beyond that that is going to be coming onto the Plains in Damari Alston. Uh, new running back also just got Sean Jackson, was a walk-on, been doing so well over the last couple of seasons he's been there, just earned himself a scholarship, and he's a bigger back. 
a lot of people are really excited about what the future holds, not just for this season, but after that with what the running back room looks like and what we may be shifting back to after what we will call is an unconventional offensive scheme for what traditionally Auburn fans tend to enjoy. Defensively, I still continue to think we're going to see a hybrid um, switching back and forth between uh, coordinators as much as we have over the last two to three seasons with the transition of regi regimes and now complete change over there in offensive and defensive coordinators. So I, I don't really have a good read on yet defensively what we will look like. I do know this, that defensive line, whether you're an edge rusher, defensive tackle, the traditional defensive end, it looks nasty. It really just looks like it could be a very bright spot on, an, on a defense where I think is going to surprise people coming into the fall. Well, the spring game at major schools typically is a centerpiece for that weekend's activities across campus, whether that be athletically or otherwise. A lot of alumni, of course, convene, and it's just a good time. So we should, I'm sure, Kyle, that uh, you and everybody there at E2C uh, Sports, at uh, E2C Network, I should say, have a, yeah. a ton to uh, track this weekend. But uh, yes. enjoy yourself, and uh, we appreciate you stopping by. Absolutely. Thank you for having me as always. And War Eagle.